Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. Everyone know we've got Bowser, our, our guest speaker for today. I'm really excited to have him on. It's been like a too long time coming. I think the first time Andy, Andy Doe is ever coming here too. That's gonna be pretty fun. Um, so today I wanna to talk about recycling and channel trading, guys, because channel trading is, is one, of, one of the most stress-free kinds of trading and recycling is what, I, what I'm gonna get into later. It's a very good defensive trading, but can, it can also be almost like an offensive tactic when it comes to trading too. Like recycling is a way of adding to a winner. And I kind of briefly touched upon this in the last couple of webinars. And so I'm gonna get more into that later. Uh, but for today, um, I'm gonna go over the key traders uh, that, that happened throughout the week and like kind of my views on them. Um, every week I go over a week, um, a weekly market sentiment, where I think we were, where I think we're going, where I think we're at right now, um, and what I think, you know, is going to cause fear, whether I'm leaning to more aggressive or defensive on stocks. Um, I'm going to skip the, the trader topics today because uh, we have a guest speaker and I want to I have more time to, to chat with Val. But so we're going to go straight after the market sentiment, we're going to go straight into um, recycling and channel trading, and that's where I'll, we get to open up. Val's mind a little bit. PSTV, uh, this was a trade uh, a few days ago, I think. Uh, I, yeah, I think this was Monday. This was basically a short into resistance trade. You're basically just using free market highs as, as the short, right? But the key to this trade is that you have to understand that not every time they're gonna get to the line, guys, right? You, you have your lines and you wanna be patient for them, but oftentimes they stop short and that's, that's why you can sometimes build into position and like, like I said last night uh, in last webinar in the adding to winner webinar, what you want to avoid is getting in full size into the trade before the trade starts to work. Because that's, that's the number one reason why new traders are having a hard time with having smaller losers and bigger winners, right? This is probably everybody's big problem is that like whenever they win, it's because they started scaling into the trade and it started to work right away and they covered that. But they, whenever they were, you know, whenever they lose, it's because they added all the way until, you know, they filled up their size and then they have to cut the top as the loss because that's max pain. Every trade they always cut is going to be max pain. And that's how you always end up with small winners and, and big losers, right? So the way I started this trade was partial on the front side. And you can kind of see it here. Like I have three arrows on this side and three arrows on the other side. The, the three arrows um, on the other side is the add once, once, once we stuff hard at pre-market highs. Once I saw that stuff hard, I'm able to add to my position once I, what I call like my risk soulmate, right? Once I found the risk that I was totally in love with, where I knew if it ever got back over there, I'm definitely cutting my trade and I wouldn't even regret cutting the trade. That's when I feel comfortable adding to and getting to full size on the position, right? So naturally I had a, I had a cover for half, like right at VWAP, right, you know, front side short, front side cover, right? There's nothing, there's nothing in my mind that said that this couldn't like consolidate and trap down here and go higher. And because that's the possibility, that's why I always keep this front side short, front side cover rule. So I cut, I immediately cover half right away. And my other, my other half I save for the low a day targets at, you know, $3 support and low a day support. You know, I kind of mix the two up because I'm not sure which one's going to be the bottom. So uh, this is a little typo. This isn't IC. This is MYOB. And this is a trade I kind of fucked, sorry, I kind of effed up on, right? But I, I, I effed up on, but I didn't, like, I, I came out of this with, like, a, like scratch losses. You know, I shorted it at the beginning at the 14 line. I quickly covered that shit because, it, like, it clearly, like, I, I had to fight for a cover at 13, six, at 13, like, 40. So when I, I was fighting for that cover too hard, I just cut it right away once I got, once it got back over 14. Um, then I just tried a lower high short over here, and I also quickly covered, and this is probably a little... I might have been a little too afraid of the trade, but 
I, I didn't want to fight it and it and it looked pretty strong so I just quick I said I'd rather not fight that and try again it looked like it wanted higher it eventually did come up higher I tried a third short a 15 line short that one works pretty well and this is a little slip here but I plan on covering some at 14 some at 13 it held and I just you know like I didn't like the hold and my ad was a, too much of a slip so I just covered it all you know I made some back here I tried to reshort it again off this resistance and it was just it got into grindy mode so I quickly covered that one right all of these are quick cuts I, I don't ever want to fight a grinding stock I eventually flipped long because like I, I, can't, I don't want to fight this trend anymore so I put on a feeler here and I added risk once we held this dip because when I put on a feeler here like this can tank 15 and I don't want to be in trouble, right? So this is the same thought process as the last trade. Right? Hepa was a short today, which I didn't get like the, the, the most out of this trade, but I got a piece, right? So I, I initially tried to short this for a parabolic and Bao hit this one really good. So I, I, I want you to kind of go over your thought process on Hepa today, Bao. But yeah, I, shorted this, I shorted this parabolic and I felt like it was going to push again and like I really wasn't liking the hold up here like when I showed a parabolic on the front side I really wanted to see it pull pretty immediately when it didn't I thought we'd get another push up the high a day and I had orders waiting up here at 50s low 50s um yeah I, I mean I was very shocked that it freaking tanked 50 cents like in a second right um that's you, not something that usually happened with that much volume right so um you got it right yeah. right yeah, I, I nailed that one. I got, I got lucky on that. But uh, so what I noticed is this, guys. So let, let me let me bring up, let me pull up a chart. Let me let me. I'm trying to remember what I did. Yeah. Uh, do you want to put post it in here and I'll open it? I will. I'm 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 opening up a uh, big charts to see where the lines were. I'm trying to I'm trying to like re re engineer this to see where I came up with that line. Oh, a daily chart. Yeah, I'm looking at big charts to see. Uh, Yeah, it's it's tough because there is really nothing on the chart that says to 450 except a couple of things. So every half dollar could be considered kind of like a mental resistance. Every whole dollar is a definitely a mental resistance. So when it when it touches that kind of stuff, you know, I kind of look at it. But the what I saw, let me see. Let me pull up the the H. Let me pull up that trade. So what I saw was this is uh, there was an example of um, tape reading. I hate using that word tape reading because um, you have to be very careful when you when you think you can read the tape because it's like Chinese, dude. It's like if you misread the tape, you're you're gonna get screwed. So the way I usually read the tape is I, you know, I I, I watch with my lines, and then when it comes to that area of interest, then I will start looking at the level two, right? And then the way I look at it to see if, you know, how much volume is coming in and to see if it's actually like moving up or is someone selling there. And so the 450 line, if you take a look at it, it kept every time it tried to, every time the volume surge came on, it went down. It looked like someone was selling over and over at that line. And that, that's how I was able to, to, to kind of like just size in at that, that point. And so I started to scale out, but I didn't think it was dropped down to, so I saved like a quarter for, I think I covered down to like 408 from 450. So, but the key to that trade was basically waiting for that parabolic move to go up. Say that again, spot. I'm sorry. It's a good long spot. I looked along there too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So SSR is a big spot right there. Especially if it starts to wash at SSR, it, it's, a, it's a long. All right. So yeah, market time. We had some good movers. Um, most of them tanked this week. Um, I think we, we saw a little slowdown from last week. Um, there were a couple stocks that kept it going. KRTX kind of kept the momentum going. NYOB kept the market alive, right? Um, large caps are mostly green and that's good. The SPY is doing really well. So the SPY doing really, really well going into the busy, you know, the most fun, busiest time, like November, December, January. This is like ideal time for small caps. Like you want the spy to be roaring um, when at all time highs at, at the, you know, the, the pinnacle of the market here at the end of the year. So this is, I mean, we're, we're setting, we're all you for a slam dunk next week. I think like next week and the next couple of weeks should hopefully get really crazy again, get a lot of movers, multiple plays every day. That's what I'm really hoping for. So we have to be careful every, every time, every year around the Thanksgiving time, we, we call it the Turkey play. 
So mm -hmm. things go crazy. I think the turkey play started earlier this year already, right? You have these stocks going to hundred dollars. So, so you have to be very mindful. So, so next week, guys, be careful if you're shorting. Uh, things go fucking crazy, man, during the turkey week. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I. That's why I said crazy again around Thanksgiving week. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be big. All right. Yeah. Um. I think we're kind of slowing down here, but yeah, I think the buy now ask questions later market's coming up uh, right quick next week where it's, you know, shorters got to be careful. Buyers, you know, it might be a time to be a, a bit more aggressive um, in that week. And so now let's get straight into recycling. Now, Val's the king of recycling. So like, feel free to interrupt at any time, buddy. Talk about, I mean, this, this is the, the, the easiest way to short, guys. Um. Oh, wow, this is perfect for recycling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so the way I do is, remember, I, I use simple resistance and support. And so the if you take a look at this, draw the line across, man. It's, it's all the same area that's doing the resistance. And so when these stocks tank down so fast, I put my – or the moment I cover, dude, I put it right back on. I put it right back onto the resistance line, just in case it goes back up. And so, so let me see. This is a lot of times there, there's very obvious channel trading. We'll talk. You'll, you'll talk about that later. But, but in this case, all all I did was I just put put it on on all the resistance lines, as you, as you notice, and I covered it out. And to be honest, when I trade, I I I should have the VWAP on, but. In my real take, it doesn't have the VWAP. So I'm actually not even looking at the VWAP, but it turns out the covers are right at the VWAP line. You see how, you see how weird it is? It's like the fact that you can determine what VWAP is that is already on the chart without even drawing the VWAP line. It's because, let me see. So these covers that you see here, I didn't even know that that was the VWAP. I should be looking though what the VWAP is, but, um, but, it, but my point being is like, Okay, the, the, the lines, the charts show you everything, okay? And so you don't need indicators, in my opinion. It, it's nice to have some, the, the, the indicators I use is just the VWAP stuff. But, but if you notice, it's like, if you just read the chart, the information is there, guys. And it's basically, you have to have trust in the lines. You have to have trust in the resistance lines. And... And if you notice, dude, it's, it's the same spot that I'm shorting. And then, let me see, what time is it here? 10.30. You see the zombie rule? 10.30? I covered. I'm done. And then, boom, it spikes up from the VWAP, 13.70 to 14.60, dude. If, no. if, and so if I didn't stop at, v, uh, at the zombie time, I'm fucked. Oh. And I thought this was going down. <laughs> what is that? Chewbacca? Oh, Darth Vader. <laughs> so the, the zombie rule is very important, man. I mean, it saves me a lot. I mean, it's, it's, dude, before I figured it out, it, it was like, dude, I, just, I was like, I couldn't understand why I kept on getting trapped. And so it's kind of like I looked at the times and I was like, dude, this, this is a fucking pattern that keeps happening all the time. And so the reason why, once again, is the volume slows down at that time. It shrinks down. And if you take a look at, if you take a look at the range, okay, I look at range a lot to determine whether or not I should enter a trade. So in the morning, you notice the range is huge, 1430. It's like a dollar range, right? Uh, at 930, it's a dollar range. If you take a look right before 1030, the range shrunk down to 20 cents. You see that? And then followed by, boom, $1 spike up. So the, when the range collapses and it, it, the, it's, it, it, it narrows, you got to be fucking careful. Something's going on. It's like, a, it's like a spring that's coiled up, ready to fucking you know, right. spring out, right? Yeah, when it feels like you're trying to squeeze, rock, squeeze water from a rock, it's time to yeah. walk. Correct. And this happens to coincide exactly with 1030, the zombie rule. Yep. 
Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.